In the mid-1960s, the U.S. Navy required an anti-submarine carrier-based aircraft with subsonic, all-weather, and multi-mission capabilities. The answer was the Lockheed Martin S-3. The jet aircraft was capable of reading the enemy and sophisticated enough to engage in electronic warfare. It was initially designed to fight against the Soviets in the Cold War, but it evolved into arguably the most versatile aircraft of the U.S. Navy. Its unmatched range enabled it to locate and destroy targets far away from its fleet, redefining the role of scout aircraft. A defense mechanism. By the end of World War II, the Soviet Union possessed the largest submarine fleet on the planet. Over 200 Whiskey-class and 35 Zulu-class submarines posed a considerable threat to the U.S. Navy. Although the Soviets' technology was impressive, their hunter-killer pairs were losing their grip on the ongoing conflict. Still, the U.S. Navy needed an aircraft that could defend the American fleet from enemy submarines while performing as both hunter and killer. That aircraft would be the Grumman S-2 Tracker. By the 1960s, the Soviet surface fleet had grown dramatically, with destroyers and firepower that equaled the West's. The Soviet Navy's buildup was evident, especially in the Mediterranean and Indian Oceans. In addition, more powerful versions such as the Echo 2 and the Victor-class attack submarines soon roamed the waters and could potentially destroy American warships. The U.S. Navy then issued the VSX requirement for a carrier-based anti-submarine aircraft that would replace the piston engine tracker. In late 1968, Lockheed and Convair Grumman were asked to further develop their proposals to meet these requirements. Lockheed had little experience in designing carrier-based aircraft and included Ling Temco Vought into its team. The firm was responsible for the aircraft's characteristic folding wings and tail, the engine nacelles, and the landing gear. Meanwhile, Sperry Univac Federal Systems developed the onboard computers, which integrated input from the sensors and sonar buoys. The YS-3A Lockheed model would be selected as the winner only a year later, and eight prototypes were ordered. The Viking The Viking was a conventional monoplane, with a cantilever shoulder wing slightly swept at 15 degrees and an almost straight trailing edge. Its skin was all metal and high strength for carrier-borne operations. Also, two parallel beams between the tailhook and forward landing gear provided support to withstand repeated catapult launches and arrestor landings. The aircraft featured two GETF-34 high-bypass turbofan engines mounted on underwing nacelles with excellent fuel efficiency. The wings folded upward and inward hydraulically for transfer and storage. Spoilers were fitted on top and under the wings. Dual hydraulically boosted irreversible systems actuated the control surfaces and its flight control system permitted manual control in case of emergencies. The Viking didn't require ground surface equipment, as it was equipped with an auxiliary power unit capable of unassisted starts. The original APU provided minimal power for cooling and pneumatic starters, but a newer version provided full electrical service. Suited for a crew of four, it included three seats for officers and another for an enlisted crew member, with the pilot and co-pilot at the front, and a tactical coordinator and sensor operator at the back. The crew faced forward an upward-firing Douglas SK Pack 00 ejection seats. The aircraft also had a group eject mode, with a coordinated launch sequence separated by 0.5 seconds starting with the back seats. The Viking was equipped to fly extended missions and perform in-flight refueling. Its unique sound earned it the nickname of War Hoover, after the famous vacuum cleaner. Since 85% of its thrust was provided by blades and not the jet engine, the noise came from air passing through them at different speeds. Production on the Viking ran from 1974 to 1978, with 186 finished aircraft. Airborne The first prototype flew in January of 1972, piloted by John Christensen. The aircraft then entered service in 1974, featuring an unprecedented level of integration of systems. Initial models were equipped with separate instrumentation and controls for each sensor system. These systems were computerized and integrated into a general-purpose digital computer. 
A multipurpose and individual display available to each crew member allowed them to consult one another by simultaneously examining the data. The efficient assignment of responsibility and the seamlessly combined clues from each sensor made the S3 almost equivalent to the 12 crew Lockheed P3 Orion. Two underwing hardpoints carried fuel tanks, general purpose and cluster bombs, missiles and rockers, and served for storage, too. Meanwhile, four internal bomb base stations carried bombs, aerial torpedoes, and even nuclear weapons. The Viking also carried 59 sono buoys and a dedicated search and rescue parachute. It was fitted with the ALE-39 electronic countermeasure system that detected hostile radars in 360 degrees, and it could carry 90 rounds of chaff, flares, and expendable jammers. A retractable magnetic anomaly detector boom was also fitted in the tail. All in all, the absence of air-to-air -air weaponry made it unable to defend itself, as anti-aircraft artillery posed the most significant threat. Chaff and flares were used to confuse the enemy's fire control and missile guidance systems, but the S-3 mainly relied on its maneuverability and agility to survive. On February 20th, 1974, the S-3A officially became part of the Air Anti-Submarine Squadron 41 at NAS North Island in California. The Shamrocks served as the initial S-3 fleet replacement squadron for the Atlantic and Pacific fleets until 1980, when a separate Atlantic FRS was established. Starting in 1987, the surviving S-3As were upgraded to S-3Bs, with new sensors, avionics, and weapon systems, such as the AGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missile. This was used in conjunction with Inverse Synthetic Aperture Radar, or ISAR, which read the motion of a target and provided an image. If the system deemed a target hostile, the Harpoon was launched. Moreover, the S-3Bs could be fitted with buddy stores or external fuel tanks that allowed them to refuel other aircraft while on flight. In addition, 16 S-3As were converted into ES-3A Shadows, a collection of electronic intelligence aircraft for carrier-based duties. Six others, designated US-3A, were equipped for specialized utility and carrier onboard delivery. Plans for a carrier-based tanker, the KS-3A, were cancelled. Missions. With the collapse of the Soviet Union and the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact, the threat from submarines decreased. By the 1990s, the focus shifted to anti-surface warfare and aerial refueling, sea surface search, sea and ground attacks, and over-the-horizon targeting. Anti-submarine equipment was no longer a priority and features such as the MAD boom and several hundred pounds of electronics for submarine detection were removed. In addition, the Navy was in the process of downsizing, attempting to reduce the variety of aircraft deployed aboard carriers. They now sought more versatile multi-role aircraft instead of specialized ones. S-3B has still provided extensive coverage in 1991 during Operation Desert Storm. In the first 24 hours, Coalition aircraft flew a thousand sorties, a quarter of which took off from the six Navy carriers in the area. Flexibility was vital in the Gulf War, and the Vikings executed a wider variety of roles and missions than any other Navy aircraft. It served as an attacker, a tanker, performed electronic intelligence duties, and launched decoys to deviate surface-to-air missiles. This would mark the first time that it was employed over land during an offensive airstrike. That same year, the first ES-3A Shadows were delivered after two years of testing. Two squadrons of eight were provided to the VQ-5 Sea Shadows, in the Pacific Fleet, and the VQ-6 Black Ravens in the Atlantic. The ES-3A operated mainly with carrier battle groups, providing organic indications and warning support. Viking squadrons were then redesignated from anti-submarine warfare squadrons to sea control squadrons, and they would actively participate in the Yugoslav Wars in the 1990s and Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001. In addition to its extraordinary handling and range, the Viking was the preferred recovery tanker. It flew an average of 100 flight hours per month, so much so that its excessive use caused the early need for equipment replacement, which led to budget-driven decisions. On May 1, 2003, a Viking flew President George W. Bush to USS Abraham Lincoln off the coast of California, where he delivered his mission accomplished speech, announcing the end of major combat in the invasion of Iraq. That aircraft was soon retired, and is on display at the National Museum of Naval Aviation at NAS Pensacola, Florida.
Retirement. As plans for an airframe known as the Common Support Aircraft failed to advance as a successor to the S-3, the Viking was forced into retirement. A full-scale fatigue test by Lockheed Martin extended its service life by 11,000 flight hours, supporting the Navy's plans to retire all Vikings by 2009. New fighters and multi-mission models assumed the new operations, recapitalizing their obsolete fleet. The S-3 phased out from service aboard carriers in 2009 and was replaced by the P-8 Poseidon, the Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk, and the Boeing FA-18EF Super Hornet. A few Vikings remained in use for range clearance and surveillance operations, with the Air Test and Evaluation Squadron 30 based out of NAS Point Mubu, California, and with NASA at the Glenn Research Center. And up to 2015, three Vikings were still being used by the U.S. Navy, but they officially retired in January of 2016. One was transferred to the Boneyard, and another to NASA. Several analysts have argued that the Vikings should return to service to fill gaps it left in the carrier air wing. This comes on the heels of the Chinese Navy producing new weapons that can threaten carriers beyond their own range of operation. Bringing the S-3 out of retirement could be a stopgap measure to protect the aircraft carriers until new aircraft are developed. Only time will tell. Thank you for watching our video. Please let us know in the comments below your thoughts on the Viking and if you'd like to see a particular story featured in our videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting historical content.